speech. I spoke of Parliament's duty to serve the people. Today, I'm asking, who does this Parliament really serve? I'll review the Morrison government's actions and this Parliament's actions that carry the stench of cronyism and corruption. Starting with changes to water policy that Malcolm Turnbull and John Howard introduced in 2007. Those changes turned ownership and trading of water rights into a $20 billion industry. Large corporate interests, trade union bosses controlling industry super funds, and national party power brokers have rushed to take advantage of this new wealth. And by take advantage, I really mean make out like bandits at the expense of family farms who can no longer afford water for their crops. I'm raising this issue first up because it illustrates how things are done in federal parliament. The Water Act already requires a transparent water trading register. The government tried to introduce one in 2012, stuffed it up and then gave up. I thought asking the government to take another run at it to reveal who was lining their pockets with the proceeds of water speculation would be straightforward. How naive was that? My amendment was opposed. The same party, the Liberal Nationals, that passed the legislation in the first place requiring a water trading register opposed my amendment that sought to ensure compliance with the Parliament's legislation. The Senate, with Labor's support, passed my amendment and it proceeded to the lower house where Labor rejected it. What happened in the 100 metres between the Senate and the House of Reps? The fix happened. The fix to protect corporate water traders. Labor agreed to cover for its LNP mates and the LNP returned the favour. That's how this Parliament works. Cronyism is an art form. The same pattern of immoral behaviour occurred with the legislation One Nation introduced to stop banks bailing in depositors' funds to serve, save banks in a crisis, stealing customers' hard-earned deposits. In 2018, Parliament passed legislation to allow a bail-in as part of emergency financial measures. The Labor, Liberal and National parties teamed up to oppose my bill and justified that action with a complete lie that the emergency provisions did not give APRA the power to order a bail-in. My legislation to protect the $1 trillion in bank deposits of everyday Australians was defeated despite the Treasury admitting in a briefing to my face that those emergency provisions do allow a bail-in. The Liberal Nationals Labor duopoly lied so their donors in the major banks can keep the right to steal your money to save themselves. The same cronyism was in place over the Christine Holgate watch scandal at Australia Post. As we now know, those watches were given to management as a reward for completing a very profitable deal for Australia Post. Australian executive, Australia Post executives accepted the watches and agreed to forego much larger bonuses. Why would the Prime Minister and the Parliament misrepresent a measure that saved Australia Post money? Because Christine Holgate had negotiated a fee with the banks of $20 million a year for the provision of banking services through licensed post offices and the banks wanted a bigger share of those profits. Christine Holgate made the mistake of costing the big four banks money and an example had to be made of her. And what a show Scott Morrison put on. After Ms Holgate was sacked and, and Australia Post was removed back into the hands of friendlies, the deal was renegotiated. The banks are now only paying half that, $10 million a year, and 4,000 licensed post office franchis franchisees got screwed. How much did it cost the banks to get the outcome they wanted from this parliament? In the last election cycle, Australian banks donated $500,000 to the Liberal and National parties and $400,000 to the Labor Party. There's more. The Australian people can see that cronyism extends to pharmaceuticals. Most people don't know who funds the body that approves pharmaceuticals in Australia, the Therapeutic Goods Administration, known as the TGA. The big pharmaceutical companies applying for approvals themselves fund the TGA. The expert committees that advise the TGA on what to approve are composed largely of university academics whose departments receive funding from pharmaceutical companies. That doesn't pass the pub test. Nor does this. In the last election cycle, the pharmaceutical industry donated $276,000 to Labor and $400,000 to the Liberal Nationals. Earlier this year, One Nation combined with the Greens to extend the license of community TV stations C31 in Melbourne and Channel 44 in Adelaide. After Malcolm Turnbull in 2012 confiscated those free-to-air transmission rights to force viewers back to commercial TV owned by his mates. C31 and, C and Channel 
44 survived on the back of large public campaigns. Why was it so hard to get an extension for community TV to use a spectrum that's not needed until 2024? Could it be because the commercial stations through Free TV Australia donated $17,000 to Labor and $13,000 to the Liberals? And that, of course, is the problem. Yesterday in the Senate, the Liberal Nationals and Labor duopoly teamed up to stop measures that One Nation and Senator Rex Patrick jointly proposed to make Woodside Petroleum pay for the $2 billion cost of cleaning up their environmental damage in the Timor Sea. Woodside easily evaded their responsibility to the people of Australia. It simply sold the little bit of extraction left in the gas field, including their cleanup liability, to a small company for a few million dollars. That company was then wound up and the taxpayers are now on the hook for the cleanup. One Nation's amendment would have restored the liability on Woodside. The crossbench supported that. Labor and the Liberal Nationals opposed it. Then I discovered that Woodside donated $135,000 to Labor and $148,000 to the Liberals Nationals. What a surprise. And then there's Beetaloo Basin. It's in the news this week because the government passed legislation to allow cash payments to its mining mates to frack the Beetaloo Basin. Guess who funds the cost of the exploration? Some $7 million per well. Taxpayers, via a grant. Yet the gas extraction company owns the well and keeps profits from extraction. This little earner is called socialising the risk and the costs while privatising the profits. The first recipient of this cronyism was Empire Energy, a Liberal Party donor. But you didn't hear this from the opposition because Empire Energy donated $25,000 to the Labor Party. In echoing Senator Hansen's repeated calls, Senator Patrick has rightly pointed out that the oil and gas industry exported $62 billion in 2018-19 and paid the taxpayers just $1 billion in royalties. The taxpayers are getting royally screwed by this crony capitalist approach to government. One Nation supports free enterprise. We do not support cronyism. Earlier this year, One Nation introduced a motion to refer misuse of federal government disaster relief funds to a Senate inquiry. Millions, possibly billions of dollars are being misappropriated with no suitable work being conducted. The Liberal Nationals and Labor duopoly rode to the rescue of their mates and voted down our motion. No inquiry. The car park scandal has seen the Liberal, they've seen the Morrison government give $420 million of taxpayer money for commuter car parks in areas that don't need commuter car parks including three in the Treasurer's electorate and one for a train station that's closing. Now I assume even this government is not stupid enough to build a car park at a train station and that's not there anymore. So I wait with anticipation to see which of the government's mates just got free car parks. The sports rort scandal, the inland rail infrastructure grants, the Kimber radioactive waste dump, the Murray-Darling Basin's upwater program and Watergate are all corruption scandals that a federal corruption commission should have been dealt with if we had one. Parliament rubber stamps decisions and policies costing the people trillions of dollars so mates can feed off taxpayers, bludge off taxpayers, transfer wealth from taxpayers. The people are rightly angry. Decisions taken in the parliament must not only be honest, they must be seen to be honest and justified with hard, solid data. Australian voters will shortly be asked to pass judgment on this sorry parliament. Make no mistake, voting for the Liberal Party with their sellout sidekicks and nationals or voting for Labor and the ticket to power the Greens will represent business as usual for the Liberal Labor duopoly that has ruled this parliament for decades. It's now time at the next election to break this cycle of abuse. Stop repeatedly alternating Liberal nationals with Labor and expecting anything to change. It's now time to change the parliament. There are many third, party, third parties putting their hands up in this election and none have a track record of achievement greater than one nation. I'm very proud of the contributions Senator Hanson, Mark Latham, Steve Andrew, Rod Roberts and I have made and are making to restore governance to Australia. To Australia. Despite the Liberal, Labor and National Party's dishonest, many dishonest attempts to destroy her for 25 years, Senator Pauline Hanson and One Nation have remained true to the Australian people and we will continue to be so. In conclusion, I make an observation regarding the Perspex security screen that now protects the leader of the opposition in the Senate from the leader of the opposition in the Senate and vice versa. This screen sends a powerful message to the Australian people. The Senate chamber now resembles a visitation centre at one of Her Majesty's prisons. How very appropriate. This is not a parliament, it's a crime scene. <laughs>